What's up guys? Hey, so today I want to talk a little bit about Jet and how far he's come in just a short time. It's flat out amazing. The greedy people that run this sport have gone too far and they're getting exposed. I've got more information about that. Thank you to all the members. I really appreciate it. It's $2.99 a month. It's, you know, a half a cup of a coffee. So I appreciate it, it means a lot to me, and I will keep doing what I'm doing and bringing you the truths and the financial information about this sport to make it better. And also, check those subscriptions. I still don't know why, but people are getting unsubscribed from the channel, and YouTube doesn't seem to have an answer as to why, but it just happened. So if you didn't unsubscribe yourself, just take a quick look and make sure you're still subscribed. I appreciate it. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers I say, that's the bad guy. Jet Lawrence, this kid has done some pretty amazing things in this sport in a very short time. He has been in this sport for, eh, let's say five years from when I'm gonna start this. Five years ago, he was at Monster Cup and he won. And he pulled up some donuts up on the stage. We're like, what's this Australian kid doing with glazed donuts up here? And I, I remember this because I was in the press conference and I asked him about it. Uh, what's with the donuts? Donuts on the podium, donuts up here, what's up? It's donuts. What's not to like? But it's donuts. Wait. Now, I was just kidding. I was busting his balls a little bit because he was a kid and he won the race. And what you don't get to see in that conversation is when I was smiling when I asked that. You know, sometimes when you just hear the voice, you get one portion of the communication. It was in, in, in fun. And I really loved the donut thing. And I appreciated so much his, you know, his candor and how he expressed himself and just was fun up there. I was like, wow, we have, I hope this kid is good. And I knew he was going to be good, but I had no idea in five years, we'd be talking about him in the likes of Ricky Carmichael. I figured he'd be, you know, like a Chad Reed, a Jeff Stanton, a Ricky Johnson, one of these guys that gets multiple championships. But I don't, I, I honestly, at this point in, in motocross racing, I did not think as competitive as it is with this many good guys that close that somebody could go undefeated. I actually was on record saying that would never happen again. And I was wrong. Add to that, Jet did it in his rookie season. His rookie run at Outdoor Nationals. It's one thing to win the championship in your rookie season, but to go undefeated, that is mind blowing. Then he followed it up with a championship that nobody else has ever won before. The Super Duper Championship or SMX Championship. Three rounds and he won that also. So it's two championships in his first year in a 450, first half year. Then he carries that momentum into Supercross, looked after the first round like he'd go undefeated again. Instead, he showed us his, his resilience, overcoming mistakes and still winning that championship. Then he went into the outdoors. And I mean, this is a serious run at this point. Like at some point, this kid needs a break. I mean, he's been winning and winning and winning and all this pressure and the pressure from an undefeated rookie season. I wouldn't have been surprised if they just sat him down and said, hey, just take off the outdoors rest. You need a break. Because these schedules are crazy as they talked about in the press conference. Unfortunately, he gets the injury. Chase gets another championship. Chase is the modern day Chad Reed. He wins and he's always there and he can beat these top guys, but he doesn't seem to be able to beat them consistently in a championship unless they have some sort of adversity. I don't want to take away from Chase. This is one bad dude. That's like saying Chad Reed wasn't a bad dude. Chad Reed took it to anyone on any, any given day. Both him and Chase believe they can win every single time they line up. But with all this success that Jet Lawrence has already had in the 450 class, there's a guy on the horizon that could really slow down his run at the record books. It's Hayden Deegan. Hayden Deegan is a very special talent. This kid, you know, he doesn't do it like Jet Lawrence. He does not make it look effortless. There's many different ways to ride a motorcycle. You have to do it for whatever your body type and whatever your skill set allows. Hayden Deegan can do things on a bike that Jet Lawrence can't. He's shorter. He's smaller. He has a different aggression. Jet has a finesse. And we're gonna find out which one's better. We've seen this before. If you take a look at history, Ricky Carmichael won a lot more races than James Stewart. I would say Jet is in your James Stewart category and Ricky Carmichael looks a lot more like Hayden Deegan and Chase Sexton, that's your Chad Reed. So before we go ahead and give Jet GOAT status, let's see how he does when Hayden Deegan arrives. Keep in mind, Jet might have two or three more championships before 
Hayden Deegan even arrives into the class. So he is well on his way to smashing a lot of records. Think about this. He could be a three-time Supercross champion before Hayden Deegan sets foot in that 450 class at Supercross. But I'm thinking they don't wait that long. And I think that Hayden Deegan will probably be there in the 2026 season. That's when we get the first of this gigantic rivalry that hopefully it's playing out. Motocross and Supercross is a difficult sport with a lot of injuries, but it's laying out to be one of the best storylines in the history of the sport. If you guys are an amateur racer and you want to be on the Coach Rob Complete Racing Solutions amateur development team, get your resume in. There's a link in this video. Coach is accepting resumes until the 27th of December. Get those resumes in and have Coach build you into a strong, durable athlete. Get the most out of your skills. Get onto his amateur development team. Epic Garage Designs. Travis Ogburn loves this sport. He rides regularly. That's his freedom. And he also designs badass garages with slat wall, racks, cabinets, and he also helps you build out your race vehicles. Check out what he can do for your trailers. So head up epicgaragedesigns.com. Check out Ride Strapped. Chris does an amazing job with the shirts, the glasses, the goggles. This is an up and coming company. I think you should show your support. If you're wondering about the quality of the goggles, here's a little secret. All the goggles come from one or two factories. His come from the same one that the fly goggles, that the 100% goggles, they all submit their designs and a lot of the lenses cross over. So hit up ridestrap.com and if you're curious what lenses fit what, just shoot Chris a message. Precision Transport. If you're tired of these trucking companies jerking you around, not giving you tracking numbers, charging high prices, don't deal with them. Go to pretransport.com. The Madden family does a good job. So hit up pretransport.com. That's Precision Transport, affordable and reliable. So if you guys saw my last video, I got the statistics about the salaries or the purse money from Supercross and Motocross from the Supercross stat guy, Clinton Fowler. Clinton Fowler is a statistics genius. This guy gets things done and he figures out all these different stuff. He had no intentions of blowing out Supercross and Motocross. He works for them. He was trying to show how much money is being paid at Super Duper, which he did. But inadvertently, he exposed how little they pay throughout the first part of the year, putting all the onus of riders making money on the factories and their sponsors, their personal sponsors. There's no way to make money off of this sport. And I'm not going to revisit that whole issue. If you want, watch the last video. But I just want to say to Clinton Fowler, that has got to be tough. When you're a stat guy and you pull the truthful statistics, your bosses have told so many lies and so many narratives that all you're doing is pulling from the truth and you're telling the wrong story and you're, you're in trouble for telling the truth. That shows you everything you need to know about Kerry Coombs, Davy Coombs, and Feld. If you tell the actual facts, you get in trouble. Clinton Fowler is amazing at statistics. He does an amazing job presenting them in an entertaining way. I really appreciate it. If they fire him for this, we need to be in an uproar. Clinton Fowler, he's a gift to this sport and he meant no ill will by doing that. All he put out was truth. And I just happened to tell you a little bit more about why that truth is. And speaking of that, so people that don't know, Kerry Coombs, Davy Coombs, their employees hate them. They really do. It's funny. I have a couple sources that work in the offices with them. They don't know that I know a lot of stuff. For example, I know that the Thursday before Bud's Creek, they were planning on keeping me out of the event. They had no intentions of letting me get through that gate. It went sideways when I got through the gate, but they had planned that ahead of time. And I also had somebody, you know, I've been asking about how they got control of the outdoor series because they went into the meeting against the AMA representing the NPG, the National Promoters Group, which were all the tracks, something that Big Dave Coombs Sr. created. Kerry and Davey, on good faith, were negotiating to get the rights for them. They had no intentions of ever like getting the series for the NPG. I actually spoke to somebody who has firsthand knowledge of being inside the room where those negotiations were made. Instantly, Carrie and Davey said, nah, the NPG is a joke. Uh, we have MX Sports. They took control. They never even attempted. They will tell you they tried and that they blame it on Daytona Motorsports Group for not wanting to deal with the NPG, which is a lie. And I have this from somebody who has firsthand knowledge who was in the room when this happened. But... When this did happen, there was a need to improve the outdoor series. It looked like crap. 
the tracks didn't look good. It was up to each promoter. Some put in effort, some didn't. And the series was struggling. So what MX Sports did was they went in and they said, okay, we want to uniform the look. And they came up with a plan to do this. And for the first five to seven years, they really revitalized the outdoors. The outdoors were on their way out. They were really struggling and they did. Problem is, is as they gained power, they never gave it back to the tracks and they've just continued to grab more and more and more. What's that old saying? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is a perfect example of what happened here. And the way they hid how they got rights is they have the media narrative. They have Racer X. They have all the minions underneath them. They were able to tell whatever story they wanted and discredit anyone with the truth up until recently. So when any of these track owners spoke up about what happened with the NPG, their qualifiers or Loretta qualifiers were pulled and they were leveraged hard and just, they came down on them with an iron fist. So they had to get in line, do what they had to do, make their little bit of money and keep what they had going. I can only imagine big Dave Coombs senior, what he would think of what his kids have done to all the business partners that he tried to protect with the NPG. He has got to be rolling over in his grave. It's disgusting. This is the epitome of second generation wealth, just totally destroying everything that their father stood for. It's disgusting. And I feel really bad because big Dave Coombs senior did a lot of the right things and everything I remember of big Dave Coombs senior, this guy was a stand up guy. So everybody is talking about, Oh, well, it's the way it is. It's the way it's always been. I learn the future by learning the history. History just repeats itself. If you look at the way things have gone, that's what's going to happen in the future. If you don't learn the history, you are doomed to repeat it. If you look at every major sport, there was a time when pro baseball, they were just happy to make enough money to live playing baseball. They're like, wow, we get to play baseball. But when they realized that the owners were making so much money and they're getting two to 3% of that and taking jobs in the off season, while these owners were getting rich, it hit a breaking point. This happens in every major sport. This sport for the longest time has not been to this breaking point. It has been 10, 15, 20 years ago where they were just happy to do what they were doing and it was just surviving. Now we're at that breaking point where they're making a ton of money and the riders and teams still are not. This is the breaking point where we're gonna see them. They have to get a revenue share. If they do not get a revenue share, this sport is going to crumble from the inside out. And historically, if you look at every one of these sports, F1, pro football, baseball, and all these different sports, after they got through this you know, unsettling time where they had to fight for the revenue split, they've all flourished. So if you wanna know what's gonna happen, if they give them more the, the percentage, the sport will grow and everyone, including the promoters, will make more money. The problem is Kerry Coombs doesn't know how to rule other than as a dictator. You know, some people use the carrot and the stick. She has a stick. Your stick's not big enough. And I will be at the SMX event. And if you try and ban me from this one, I'm gonna ban you from Las Vegas. This is my town and I will not allow you to mess with me here. So good luck on that. You plan whatever you want, but I will make your time in Las Vegas miserable if you mess with me. Thanks guys, that's it for the show today. I will be back tomorrow with a gambling show if they get the matchups up in time. And I'll let you guys know who I'm gonna pick to make some money on this weekend because we've got Super Duper round two in Texas. And don't forget, every single person who's joined as a membership, we got about 60 people right now, so you got some really good odds to win this $1,000 helmet that Coach Rob is donating. He's donating a 6D custom painted CRS helmet to a member. We're gonna have that painted. I'll have it on display here. And sometime, I don't know, you, know how, you guys know how helmet painters are? They're artists, they take it at their own time. But when we get that, we will run it for a little while and a, a member will absolutely get that helmet. So thank you guys. I appreciate everything and I will catch you later. Thank you, Nick Holbrook. You are a member of the day.